Welcome to the She Is Podcast, where we are encouraging and equipping women to be confident in God's promises. I'm Jamie. I'm Sherry. I'm Nicole. We are women in different ages and stages of life. We are active in ministry and are here to have a Bible-based conversation about our identity in Christ. So get ready to be encouraged and equipped as we share with you today. Hi, everyone. So the power of life and death is in the tongue. This week we hear from Jamie as she shares about being a mom of teenagers. This conversation about speaking life over our youth, over the youth of today, will give you tools to influence those around you. We're joining the social scene, everyone. Search for the She Is Podcast page on Facebook. We're also on Instagram. Let me give you that. It's the at sign... She underscore is underscore podcast. So that's that little line that goes on the bottom. So don't write out underscore. So it's (laughs) at she, and it's that little symbol that Mm -hmm. looks like you're underlining an empty space. So at she underscore is underscore podcast on Instagram. So, uh, and the scriptures today, I'm just going to throw those out there if that's okay. Sure. Uh, We've got Proverbs 18.21. So get your Bibles ready. Proverbs 18.21, Luke 2.51, and Ephesians 4.29 to 32. You are not going to want to miss this. This is really good. It's got a lot of good information. So thank you for joining us. Hi, welcome back everybody. We Hi. are here, but we are minus Nicole tonight. Yes. Um, yes. She is spending some time with her family, mm-hmm. which we will allow <laughs> this one time. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of important, but yeah. Oh, so uh, we didn't want to be down a person, so mm-hmm. I have invited our good friend Stacy to join us tonight. Yeah. Hi, <laughs> thank you. So, Hi. yeah, Stacy uh, is a awesome member of our church. She's a yes. worship leader. She's an intercessor. She is a spreader of joy. Yes. And, um, yeah, I I have a lot of um, appreciation and respect for her and yes I, yeah i know you do too sherry yes so i do we're yes. just excited to have the opportunity to have her join us tonight <laughs> excited to be here and i feel the same about you so uh this will be fun Ooh, i got bumps it's gonna be good <laughs> oh, i'm so excited all righty well to kick us off tonight just for a little fun fun mm-hmm. let's talk about one of my favorite things movies oh. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Okay, so I love watching movies. I kind of always have. And, um, yeah, I wanted to know, what are your girls' favorite movies? What do you enjoy? Oh, golly. I uh, I think it depends on my mood. I mean, the very first movie that comes to mind is, um, gosh, I can't even remember the name. You know, the... All of the superheroes. Oh, the Marvel movies. Marvel movies. Mm. But I, but I'm not really into all of them. But the ones that has the strong woman character, mm. I really enjoy. Like, but which which are the strong women? Um, I haven't watched very many of them. I'm curious. Well, and I'm having a. a can I say this on a brain fart? <laughs> we'll edit that out. <laughs> it's a thing. It's a thing. <laughs> um, so there's like Captain Marvel, right? Yes. Is it Captain Marvel? I think is that her name? I think so. Mm-hmm. I've seen oh, that one. I mm-hmm. had her back here on my little daily. That's like the the one from the nineties. I think. Or she's, like, based in the 90s. Based in the 90s, yeah. I think. Anyway, she's very strong, and she, you know, she was a pilot. I think it yeah. is. Because yeah. she was the pilot, mm-hmm. and she didn't know her life, and then she got flooded with these memories, and and she, when she got strong and who she remembered and knew herself to be, she was unstoppable. Totally unstoppable. And 
Uh, I have to remind myself mm. of those things, too, that with God, I'm unstoppable. And that strength that comes when you know the Lord and you trust in the Lord and your faith is in the Lord and what He has. You're unstoppable and you've got that strength that you didn't know you had. That's mm-hmm. awesome. And that, yeah, that is like an identity story, too, kind of yeah. like you said. That's really cool. Because, yeah, once she knew who she was and those things mm-hmm. weren't in question, mm-hmm. then she she knew how to face her enemies. Yes. Mm-hmm. And she knew that what they were saying to her was lies. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm. And I don't usually watch movies. You know, I usually... Movies are nice, but I'm not one to watch it over and over. I watch it once. It's like, oh, that was a great story. Okay, good. But that one, I've watched a couple times. All righty. So, you know, I don't know. Good deal. One of the movies that I have watched over and over, Mm -hmm. (laughs) because usually there's just a couple of them that Mm -hmm. I have watched over and over, and it is um, Ever After with Drew Barrymore. (gasps) Oh, love the Cinderella story, and there is just something really special about Mm -hmm. so many pieces of that story. I love uh, that, um, you know, we... The I the idea that there is hope no matter what you've gone through. Mm. You know, she loses a, a parent who is the center right. of her world, and then loses another, her father, who is also the center of her world. So so loss and and then how she carried herself through conflict with, mm. um, you know, a stepmother and stepsisters and. And I just, you see her grow as a person and mm-hmm. begin to realize that she can stand up for herself. And through the whole thing, of course, I love love stories anyway, mm-hmm. but this one just, um, it carried something really special mm-hmm. with it that she became that kind of, no, I'm not going to um, be sold off to somebody as a, I'm right. not. Mm-hmm. She right. stood up for herself and, <laughs> um, and, you know, happily ever after. <laughs> well, that's yes. another one that's too. Because the the prince comes to rescue her at yes. the end, but when mm-hmm. he gets there, she's already she, freed herself. She already took she's care. She's like, of it. I don't need yeah. you. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, thanks for but coming she, though. She took him anyway. Yes, yeah. yes. Thanks but, for coming. Yeah, yeah. yeah. cherry on top. Ooh. Right. It was the bonus. <laughs> yes. Oh goodness. Okay. Well, you guys are so deep with your movies. Okay, I'll share a couple. I'm gonna <laughs> share. I'll share a deep one in a second. But okay, one movie that I've seen over and over that I just love. It, I think it's time for me to watch it again. Actually, is um, you've got mail. With, oh, oh, I haven't seen that forever. <gasps> it's so good. It's just. Oh, it's I'm just such a cute that. little story, and yeah, they're just. They're just adorable. That one. It's just. <laughs> It's just one of those movies that you just <laughs> get under a blankie and... You've got me... Okay, I need to make a mental note. Oh. Actually, I'm going to make a physical note. Because, <laughs> because I walk away and then I'm like, well, what was that movie that somebody said was really good? Have you seen it? Maybe when it very first came okay, out. Okay, it's, so. it's old. You know, it's in the You've Got Mail days, so... <laughs> right. So it's a day so. or two. You know, not too long ago. I'm not remembering it, so I think I need to go check it out. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Cool. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that one's just kind of a, a cute little, yeah, rom-com. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, so for a deep story, this is uh, kind of silly, but I really, the story spoke to me a lot, is um, Mr. Megorium's Wonder Emporium. Have really? you seen it or heard of I've it? I've only seen parts of it that. It has Dustin Hoffman as this really quirky story like toy store owner guy he's hilarious and then um natalie portman um it works in his little toy store and the story um is really about um her knowing about the main character um natalie portman's character knowing or finding out that she has like the magic in her that she thought she was depending on mr megorium for and then Mm -hmm. he left quotes (laughs) quotes <laughs> if you've seen it you know he left or he departed departed and um and left the store with no magic and then she she found out that she had all oh, yeah, all that it needed she was trying to re oh yes 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 okay yeah. i do remember this yes and so yeah it ends okay. and it's kind of corny and she's kind of dancing and like 
just it's, it's kind of weird around the store but like everything comes to life again so mm. yeah when M- mr morgorium was there like the toys moved and were just interactive oh. with the kids and it, it was just magical and then when he was gone everything was like black and lifeless and mm-hmm. she's like there's no way to bring this back he's mm. gone and then she finds out that no she's got it in her oh. to to bring life around her too so oh, anyway funny. yeah that spoke a lot to me so it's a cute little story that I we like can it. bring life around us yeah it's not up to someone else mm-hmm. and it's not your magic the joy that you bring i mean because when it's you not say, magic it's, it's you know what i mean it's, it's not imagination magic. yes <laughs> imagination and the, magic. the joy and the 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 happiness that you have with those things and you can have that and it's not because you have it through or from someone else it's mm-hmm. your own right yeah that's your own that then you can give and that to you others. have the capacity to bring Ooh, life word Yes. Around you. Which kind of brings us uh-huh. into what we're speaking about today. So That's I think so good. probably before I get too much further, would you open us up in prayer, Sherry? I would love to. Thank <laughs> you. Lord, we just thank you and praise you for this time together. Lord, we thank you um, that Stacy could join us today. Father, we, we thank you that, and we are humbled. Lord, we are humbled that you would ask us to be your hands and feet, that it it depends on us and what we decipher in the word how we receive your word your love that that touches us and then we can turn around just like in that movie and spread that to other people that love that joy that um, identity and who we are in Christ. And so, Lord, we just thank you that you would give us this opportunity. We pray that it blesses everyone that listens, that that there will be a nugget for every single person, Lord, that you'll speak into their hearts and their lives mm-hmm. and just help them to just absorb this word, this teaching that Jamie's going to bring so that Um, again, we can spread your life, your love, your laughter, your joy to the people around us. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Awesome. So, yeah, I'm going to share um, kind of the message that I shared at our Mom to Mom conference, uh, where I was really speaking to moms of teenagers but it's really not just for moms of teenagers. Mm-hmm. It's it's really, I believe, a, a message of encouragement mm-hmm. for anybody who has anybody in their life that yes. they influence, which is everybody. Everybody, mm-hmm. everybody has somebody that they influence. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, it's really about speaking life. Um, you know, I kind of volunteered for this topic about the teenagers <laughs> because I have yes. three of them. Yes. And they are my world. Like, I love them and cherish them Mm -hmm. so deeply Mm -hmm. so um yeah just to give a little background on my kiddos um so i yeah like i said i have three teenagers my oldest is lene she's 16 Mm -hmm. she is um very capable of (laughs) running a country yes yes Yes, she is (laughs) Or, or will be very soon. <laughs> she she would like to start probably tomorrow, but <laughs> I'd vote for her. So yeah, yeah maybe that's not a good idea. yeah. She's just she's a, a natural born leader she and is. um and a doer. She just mm-hmm. she won't sit still. She she's a hard worker, and yeah, she's just she's a great great kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm mm-hmm. I'm super proud to be her mom. She's definitely going to be going mm-hmm. places, and I'm yes. excited yes. to see where they will be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, and then I have twins that are 14. I've shared about their uh, entrance into the world on a previous <laughs> podcast. But, yeah, they're 14 now. And so it's a girl and a boy. Uh, Josh says he was um, he's older, you know, <laughs> because <laughs> twins can't be the same age. The older one is the one that came out first. So he is one minute older. Um, <laughs> one whole minute. One whole minute. It's worth bragging <laughs> about, <you>. apparently. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, you guys are twins. You're the same age. But he's the older brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yes. So he is a very, very silly human being he he keeps us in stitches and he's you know he's the one that we need around because (laughs) his his dad and I tend to be I mean we have fun but we're pretty serious people and he just makes sure that we smile and laugh a lot so (laughs) he's pretty fun he is my only 
son, and so I like to give him squeezes and pats on the head and tell him that he's my favorite son, and he always finishes up that sentence with a little whisper, and child. (laughs) (laughs) So he's just cute and funny. Um, And then Grace is the uh, younger, by a minute, sister. (laughs) And she is uh, just a a beautiful individual, inside Mm -hmm. and out. She's very sweet and caring. Mm-hmm. She's a friend to everybody. Yes. And um, she's always wanting to make sure nobody gets left out. And that's not just a mom talking. Like, every teacher that, you know, I've had, that she's had and that I've met with, they're just like, oh, she's just, she always makes sure no one's Aww. left out. And I that's love awesome. that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think every every kid should have that. Oh. So, um, they are my kids, but I do think they're like the best kids on the planet. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty great. <laughs> so, yeah, I, um, like I said before, I, um, kind of volunteered. I wanted to speak about teenagers because I, I believe teenagers get a bad rap mm-hmm. and I think it's unfortunate. Um, because now that I've got three of my own, you know, I, I think I've, I've got a little experience here, and mm-hmm. and I don't think they're all bad. I agree. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I think a, a large part of that is because, you know, Jim and I have made up our minds to speak life over our kids. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so far, that's worked out pretty good. You can tell. <laughs> because of who they are. Yeah. And because of who they are around other people, they are... They are loving, they're kind, they're respectful. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, they're still kids, and yet they there's a respect level, even when they're just being kids, that you know life has been spoken into and above and over them mm-hmm. because of the way they are around others. I mean, it's true. you've done a great job parenting those children. Amazing. Well, mm-hmm. thank you, Sherry. Um there, I, <laughs> I'm just amazed when I look at them because mm-hmm. I'm like, well, I, I, I don't, I don't feel like it was me. You know, I really, I just feel like they're, they're easy kids to parent. <laughs> um, and so mm-hmm. I know everyone's got, you know, different, different stories and scenarios, but, mm-hmm. um, yeah, ours, it, I'm, I'm very blessed and I, I don't <laughs> want to take that for granted, but yeah, I just want to. Just encourage um, everyone to just mm-hmm. see the potential in their mm-hmm. in their kids and yes. in the kids around them, but also um, to recognize the power that our words carry. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, I guess we'll just start with my scripture, which is uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty one. And it says, the tongue has the power of life and death, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Mm. Um, You know, I brought this up in our conference a couple weeks ago, is that, you know, we all talk about, or, you know, hear about empowering women and the empowered woman. Mm -hmm. And I just want to share with everyone listening, you are empowered. Yes. You are And it's right here in Proverbs 18.21 because the tongue has the power of life and death. Mm -hmm. And if you are able to speak words, you Mm -hmm. have that power. Yes. Right. And and it's not just power for life, but it's power for death. And so, Mm -hmm. I don't know, what what do you girls think about, Mm -hmm. about that scripture? I, I love it. That's the first one that I went to when you said what what we were going to be just visiting about um, this evening, and and you know God's a creative God. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> so how how did He do anything? He spoke. Mm-hmm. He spoke, and it was created. The world yes. was created. The the sun and moon and stars were created. We were created, and so uh, we're made in His image, His likeness. So we are uh, in the same breath. We're able to speak <laughs> yes. life, and what we speak um, comes about. So you know, you're mm-hmm. talking. You can speak curses, or you can speak life, yes. and 
when you're intentional about what you speak, you can literally see a change. When Mm -hmm. we've done Mm -hmm. some role playing um, in trying to, some of our leadership training, where you have a difficult person that you need to have a conversation with, so you're going to role play that out with another Mm -hmm. person to see how you want the conversation to go, to say what you'd like to say. And it is incredible to to practice that because you can see a shift in how the conversation goes based on Mm. how you just tell someone what you're feeling or what you're thinking and you're doing it on purpose. You're intentional about it because you're trying to get to a place where you can have a good conversation with someone. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen someone would say, well, I would say, you know, this, that, or the other. Okay. Or could we try it like this? (gasps) Oh, Oh, right? It just because because when you pause for a moment to try to bring life to a situation or a good outcome to a situation, it really does change the whole direction of the conversation. Mm-hmm. So speaking over our kids, I absolutely love that because they are like little plants that we're putting, yes. you know, pots of soil <laughs> we're putting seed into. So yes. when you put that... Um, you are a blessing. You are um, favored of God. You mm-hmm. are. You can have this, that, or the other. You just watch them kind of just start to, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it. their countenance will change. Uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, words are really powerful. What we speak is powerful. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the way we say these words matters a lot. Uh, the Lord's got me on a journey right now about tone. Mm. Because it's not what I'm saying. It's how I'm saying it. It's the tone of voice that I'm using. And the way I was raised, we just yelled at each other all the time. <laughs> you know, that was just, it was survival of the fittest in my house. <laughs> and and in order to, you know, you just talked above each other. So there was this tone that was used. And and then when I got old enough to get into work experiences and stuff, I learn quick and I do stuff and I, you know, go do this and I figure it out and I work it out. So in every place that I've worked, I've kind of climbed the ladder pretty quickly. But that's great, but then that's bad because for someone who doesn't uh, know leadership conversation, that that could be a detriment mm-hmm. because then I don't know how to gently say things. I don't know a good tone, a voice to use to express something. And when I get serious, when I get um, busy, bu- busy, you know, business comes and I'm in a bu- busyness mode like we were Sunday Stacy, you and I were standing in the foyer. There was all this stuff happening. And you said, the most important thing you said was pause. I need to learn to stop, take a deep breath, and then speak. Mm-hmm. Instead of just rambling on because usually I will use a tone of voice that's making someone think I'm mad or I'm frustrated, or I'm yelling, Mm -hmm. when all I'm doing is trying to get my point across real quick and then move on. Mm -hmm. So so sometimes it's not what we're saying. It's the way we're saying it. Mm -hmm. And so it it says, and those who love it will eat its fruit. Mm -hmm. And it makes me think, if my tone is not sweet... They're not going to want to eat of that. Mm. And why would I even want that in my own mouth? So I'm really on this journey of good communication, good conversation. How, how am I presenting? How is it being received? Because I could come up to one of those youth and say, you're doing a great job and you're just so sweet and I love the way you're doing that. But if I don't say it in the sweetness, then I'm, it's just words. I'm not encouraging them because it's more of a slap and they're just waiting for the, mm-hmm. but what? 
mm-hmm. because of the tone I'm using. So I think in this, we also have to think about how we're speaking to these children because they aren't adults. They haven't lived like we have. So I'm always having to stop and think, I'm not going to talk baby talk to them. They're adults. But what tone am I using so that they feel loved, heard, and respected even at their age? Mm -hmm. So it is the words we speak, but it's also the way we speak those words Mm -hmm. that are going to give life or death. That's good. Mm -hmm. Well, I think... I know in the church, um, the kids, and I know this because I've spoken to them, <laughs> they mm-hmm. they feel like the adults don't expect great things from them. Mm-hmm. Um, that they the adults adults expect them to misbehave, to be rambunctious or rebellious. Um, and I'm not just talking about you know in the service, but just that's just kind of. That's what my kids feel is expected of their age group. Mm. And, you know, they're not going to say this, but I think inside they're fighting back going, don't, don't prejudge me like that. You yes. you don't know me. Right. Watch my actions, mm-hmm. you know, and, but that's the thing. I think that, you know, there's been enough mm-hmm. bad fruit from from teenagers to mm-hmm. to make older generations kind of look down on them and prejudge them and just assume they're going to be a certain way when we don't even know them. And right. we don't want right. those kinds of assumptions made about us. Right. Um right. so let's stop doing that to them. Yes. <laughs> yes. So uh, th- well so I'm going to skip ahead a, a little bit but um uh, there's a thought I want to share, but I'll, I'll get back to it. But, um, <laughs> you know, some of these things uh, about speaking life over our kids and kids in general is, you know, I believe that you reap what you sow. You're going mm-hmm. to, whatever you plant mm-hmm. in that little pot yes. <laughs> of soil, yes. that's mm-hmm. what you you can expect to come up. Mm-hmm. And so think about when you had little toddlers running around say around two years old Mm. and if they start acting up what are what is other people's response to that that they are going through the terrible twos terrible twos that Mm. and that's just to me that's always been a curse word you've just branded that child yeah yeah with something that they are not yeah and Mm -hmm. and also given an excuse to behavior that can be parented and, and trained, yes. you know, because kids, you don't have to tell kids how to misbehave. <laughs> <laughs> right. <Yes. laughs> They'll do that. Right. But right. don't, yeah, don't just put a stamp on it and, and brush yes. it aside like, well, that's it. You well, know? they're two. What do you expect? Yeah. It's well. Like, no. They're, they are not terrible. I and agree. Right. they are they are a work in progress, just mm-hmm. like any of us. Mm-hmm. And so I, I challenged our ladies at the conference, and I'm going to challenge everyone yeah. listening. Yeah. Please stop saying that. Yes. <laughs> that is a curse. That is yes. not speaking a blessing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Um, and then as as my kids got older, I'd hear you know when they when they'd start squabbling or you know things were kind of you know getting a little just not fun to be around at times, (laughs) Mm -hmm. people would say things like, just wait till they're teenagers. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Have you heard that before? Oh, yes. Oh, girls are hard. It's based on whatever their negative experience has been in life. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to project that or expect that or have you expect it for your children. And so they do it a lot of times in good nature. Yeah. But if you receive Mm -hmm. that and go, oh, yeah, that's probably what it's going to be. What have you just planted in your own heart towards your children? What what expectation have you set Mm -hmm. for their outcome or their behavior? Mm -hmm. So... It's important to to recognize those things, like what yeah. we're talking about, and and have a plan in place already that you're not going to receive that mm-hmm. or speak yes. that mm-hmm. or think yes. that or expect that over your children. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I, I I would hear that and I I would reject it. I'm yes. like, no, yeah. I because since my kids have been born, I have loved them 
more every day. <laughs> yes. I have loved being around them more. The older that they get, the yes. more fun they are. Yes. Like, like babies are awesome. Mm-hmm. Toddlers are fun and cute and yes. squeezable. And then, <laughs> yes. and then, yeah, then they they start, you know, reading and mm-hmm. and you know, getting into their own interests and having friends and yes. yeah. And it's, and that, and now that they're older and we, we talk about mm-hmm. deep stuff. We have inside jokes that yes. we all yes. giggle about. Movie quotes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> all kinds of stuff. Yes. Oh man, we were having a hoot last night. We were just <laughs> quoting YouTube videos and my husband's <laughs> like, we're all, me and the kids are all going back and forth. And Jim is like, what is that from? <laughs> <laughs> and it's it's from a YouTube video, but you know we've kind of taken it a few steps beyond that, where it's not even recognizable anymore. But we're all appreciating it anyway. Like I, my kid, like yeah, they're they're so fun, and yes. I just re- refuse to receive that. I'm like, yes. like yeah, yeah, things are things are not always fun. I mean, we definitely had emotional ups and downs where I'm like, oh my word, right. preteen girls, <laughs> <laughs> they can they can be like really excited and then just really upset and then they're fine and I'm just like what just happened in yeah. five minutes you know they spun um, you around a little bit yeah like it happens but yes. mm-hmm. but I'm not gonna yeah curse their life or no. that stage of their life because right, of that because right. honestly it wasn't no. very long right yeah. right it, it, yeah we get past it and mm-hmm. yeah we just mm-hmm. refuse to dwell on those things and yeah. label well, them and, well and we have to help them navigate the different yes. phases that they go through and so when you think about you're the the driver of the bus or the mm-hmm. steer you know you're steering the ship whatever um, <laughs> because they'll they will they will start the cycle over again from mm-hmm. where they really yeah. needed you and they were so dependent on you mm. on you as a newborn um, and then you know they become a little bit more independent and they're learning to find their voice and what they want and what they don't want and and so that those yes. cycles repeat yes. several times in life yes. and so also understanding where is my child at right now and what are they going through and what do they need from me mm-hmm. um, and it certainly is no matter what phase. Yes. <laughs> the yes. words of encouragement, the speaking the life over the yes. over this thing that they will learn and glean everything they need to get from this experience in this time and these emotions. <laughs> mm, yes. Because this I mean, there's no other time that they've had those emotions. So they're just trying to figure it out. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and we have to allow them that grace and mercy to figure that out because we can't do it for them, yeah. but like we talked earlier, we can't prejudge that either. Mm-hmm. We just have to allow it to be and know this too shall pass. Let's just watch and see how this ends mm-hmm. because it always ends better than it began. Always. So why would we prejudge something horrible when, why would it go that way naturally? Mm-hmm. It doesn't mm-hmm. because they always pick themselves back up. Or they know who to come to and say, I'm struggling with this. And then we can help them to pick themselves back up. Mm-hmm. There's just no reason to put anything negative on them. They're already struggling. I, I would not want to be a teenager right now. I'm, I'm, oh, man. It was hard enough. <laughs> they need even more they from do. us. They <laughs> do. Yeah. They do. Yeah. Oh, kids are awesome they are (laughs) so um yeah just a little personal note i wanted to share um from luke chapter two if um if y'all want to read it at home it just it talks about um some things that were spoken over jesus when he was a baby Mm -hmm. and um and sherry had opened up our conference talking about um these different phases of um transitions of motherhood that Mm -hmm. Mary went through Mm -hmm. and um and when she she was speaking about this portion in in Mary's life it really spoke to me because I've I've always kind of felt a connection to Mary and I think it's because of this verse in Luke chapter 2 uh verse 51 it says um at the end of it it says his mother treasured all these things in her heart um Mm -hmm. so there's a couple instances earlier where um Jesus was prophesied over um, by Simeon and Anna, mm-hmm. and he was an infant, and they saw him, and they they recognized who he was, mm-hmm. and 
And amazing things happen, but here's mom watching yes. and listening. Mm-hmm. And and she literally, I just imagine, like, Mary's heart is like shelves that she mm-hmm. just takes these treasures, right, that people are speaking and just puts them on the shelves. Mm-hmm. And, and every yes. once in a while she opens up the door and can look at all these treasures, yes. you know, these memories, these um, words of encouragement, mm-hmm. um, different things that she can look back on that have happened throughout her life that just give her a, mm-hmm. a brand new life. And she, she mm-hmm. treasures looking yes. at those things. Yes. Um, I just, yeah, I love that so much um, yes. that, yeah, that Mary was a mom that got to watch <laughs> Jesus grow up and go through these stages. Yeah. Um, anyway, I, I just, I love that verse and I love that thought. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I feel like I treasure a lot of things in my heart. So it's amazing. <laughs> I love that image of opening back that back up and looking at those different yeah. treasures that have been given. The word that I had always heard, the, the translation I had mm-hmm. was pondered. She pondered oh, these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, that one too. And mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. there have been a lot of times in life where I thought, oh, Lord, I'm... You're giving me that right now just to ponder. Yes. It might not be for right now. It could be a prophetic word over my yes. children, over yes. their destiny, over you know their futures. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm gonna take that promise yeah. from yeah. your word or that yeah. what I'm what I'm sensing about them right now, whatever yeah. phase of life it is, and ponder it in my heart yes. and pray over it because. I believe that's going to come about in their mm-hmm. life. Mm-hmm. And so even when we've had, like with mm-hmm. our son, uh, very intelligent, s- struggled with, be, you know, he's an underachiever in school. He he has come through that and the promises of God. To, mm-hmm. And it's just all the things that I was like, someday, <laughs> Lord, someday, yes. Lord, I believe this for yes. him. Someday you're going to use this, this, and this. Yes. And, and we, just last night we were having a conversation with him on the phone and I thought, Oh God! <laughs> yes. Look what you've done. Look yes. how faithful you've been to yes. your promises. Mm-hmm. Things that we just when well, those were words so, that yes. were spoken over Jesus, but they weren't really Jesus's to ponder yet. Right. I mean, right. I don't think right. he had an mm-hmm. understanding, even though he right. was God. And it just kind of like with with your son, that mm-hmm. you probably had more of a, a yeah. memory and a like mm-hmm. that oh, could mean more to you because you can you could yes. see the fulfillment of it. Yes, yes. Kind of from beginning to end instead mm. of just well, and it end. helped. <laughs> guide, it helped guide our mm. prayer covering for him, right? Yes. Because it didn't matter. Doesn't matter what I see. Doesn't matter yes. what I hear. Doesn't matter what I feel. Yes. <laughs> doesn't matter what it looks like right now. I am holding on to the promises that I yes. know Amen. Um, yes. are for him mm-hmm. in his life. And so, yeah, mm-hmm. it just so it gave me something mm-hmm. to anchor to mm-hmm. and that faith promise to hang yes. on to um, to believe the best no matter what mm-hmm. what what thing they're walking through or mm-hmm. phase they're going through. Mm-hmm. So good. good. So good. So our words carry a lot of power yeah Mm -hmm. they do a lot of power um this is a really interesting time (laughs) to be living in Mm -hmm. and people are speaking a lot right now yes (laughs) yes and so not just in this time but I, i think we do need to consider the stage of history we're in but what are we speaking right now to our young people Mm-hmm. What are mm. what are the messages Golly. that they're hearing from us? And we're, maybe we're not saying them to them, but they can overhear. Mm-hmm. You know oh, what are God. we what yeah. are we saying about what are we saying about our future mm-hmm. and about our government and mm-hmm. where God is mm-hmm. and the things of God? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Because they're they're listening. Yeah, <laughs> even though we don't think they are. Yeah, they are listening. Mm-hmm. They're absorbing what's around them. Yeah, and they're well, and they're forming their worldview. Yes, because yes. of the words that we're speaking, mm-hmm. and so maybe we're just saying what's on our mind because we're processing. I don't know about you, yeah. ladies, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I kind of I have to talk things through a lot just to process. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah. you know, maybe you know I do. <laughs> It's okay, you're just processing. <laughs> Stacy and I work together, so I forgot to put that in our intro. But, yeah. So, yeah, we, 
a lot of us are mm-hmm. vocal processors. Yes. Which yes. Is, it can be helpful for us, but maybe not for our kids. Mm-hmm. Well, because mm-hmm. they, in our processing, they aren't having the same thoughts and understandings that we have. Yeah. So it could be confusing to them. They could be misunderstanding what we're actually saying. Well, and maybe we're not tying up loose ends when we're processing, yes. but later yes. in thought we can be like, oh, and uh-huh. settle things, you know, but not that wasn't out loud. Mm-hmm. And so maybe things are settled for us, but not for the kids. Mm-hmm. Which leaves mm-hmm. them wondering. Yeah. Because they don't know. Mm-hmm. They, they don't have that final thought. They, they haven't lived through other things, uh, life application of it to be able to finalize that processing. Okay. They, they just don't have that. And, and so, yes, we've kind of left them in this limbo stage of, okay, so now I, now I have to decide what I think. Yeah. Well, and that's, they're formative years. They are yes. deciding. These mm-hmm. are the years when they're they're making up their minds. Yes. Of mm-hmm. Where you know they're they're setting up that trajectory for their life. Mm-hmm. And so we gotta set them up for success. Yes. Yeah. So let's be careful <laughs> what yes. we speak and how we mm-hmm. process and yes. yeah, just inviting the Lord in those conversations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um. What are the things that we're placing in our kids right now during this pandemic? Mm. I I shared um, on last week's episode, I was listening to it about um, a processing moment that me and my daughter <laughs> were having about mm-hmm. where, where the world is heading and just kind of having a little grieving moment. Yes. Um, and then I loved how Nicole popped in and said that, you know, God <laughs> wants to bring heaven on earth in those moments. Yes. Yes. And that's so true. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, <laughs> yes. we, we need to not just grieve, but, yeah, kind of complete that cycle. Mm-hmm. I should mm-hmm. probably com- complete that, that little uh, open story loop with my child and make sure that <laughs> well, that it I, ended well because yes because yeah, this still stuff we're going through so right yeah it's something we can all mm-hmm. put into practice mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. well and i think we should finish just in case you know maybe it's a so just in case you heard part of what dad and i were talking about I, do you have any questions mm-hmm. you know because i had a final thought about that and i just wanted to make sure that you understood where where we ended that conversation. Mm-hmm. Be, it, because sometimes, and they might go, oh, yeah, I know, but do they? Yeah. And sometimes, uh, you know, and, and, and asking the Lord, depending on the Lord, do I go back to that conversation or is it going to confuse them more? Do they understand? Did they hear the end? Because we don't want to do further harm. Yeah. But, okay, Lord, is this something I need to revisit? And, and really depend on the Lord to let you know. And, and then watch your children. You know your children. So you know, okay, you know what? Maybe that's something we need to bring up again. Mm-hmm. And, and it's okay to do that. Because even as parents, we, we don't know everything. Mm-hmm. And we need to be vulnerable and let them know, I don't know everything and it's okay. Mm-hmm. Because okay. then that gives them permission to mm-hmm. not know everything. Yeah, that's good. Um, I'm going to read my next scripture verses here. Um, And I've read this before. I'm sure we've all read this before. But I wanted us to keep a mindset of um, how we speak in the home as I read this. So it's from Ephesians 4, 29 through 32. And it says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouths but only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs. So mm-hmm. let's say only what is helpful for, helpful for building our children up according mm-hmm. to their needs, yes. that it may benefit those who listen. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God with whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, mm-hmm. rage, mm-hmm. and anger, mm-hmm. brawling and slander, mm-hmm. along with every form of malice. Mm-hmm. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. Yes. I think, mm-hmm. yeah, I think, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know, if I just have the so mindset good. of in the home, 
in with all those things get rid of all bitterness rage and anger Mm -hmm. brawling and slander yes every form of malice i mean when even as we're discussing Mm -hmm. you know current events going on let's get rid of that stuff because Mm -hmm. we are we are sowing seeds Mm -hmm. are Mm -hmm. yes even when we're not intending to Mm -hmm. that's right they're coming out back back to (laughs) proverbs it's life and death exactly golly yes so yeah i just just kind of want to wrap this up um that words have power Mm -hmm. um they're so much more than words um they'll go on to produce fruit Mm -hmm. and it can be good fruit or Mm -hmm. it can be bad fruit Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um i just kind of got this image of words sticking to us like Mm -hmm. post-it notes yeah. So kind of when people have speak things over you, it can be almost like they just wrote that on a post-it note and just stuck it on you and it stays with you and they're they're done, they can walk away and you're stuck with it. Yeah. And you know what kind of post-it notes are we carrying around that mm-hmm. you know maybe from our childhood or yes. um, being teenagers that have just stuck on to us. Mm-hmm. And what are the words that we're speaking that are sticking on to others? Yes. Yes, and um, about that, I'm Jamie. You did this amazing activity um, that included all of the ladies, the panel that were speaking, but also the ladies that were attending. You asked them. Well, explain to us what what you asked of them. <laughs> it was amazing. I have goosebumps thinking about it again. It was the most powerful moment. For me, in that whole conference, it was beautiful. Explain that. It was it was a a heavy moment. It was, um, but I felt like it inspired um, motion. I, I, yes, I, it sounds weird, but yeah, let me but explain. That's a good so word. I had passed out post-it notes through all the tables, and had asked everyone to to write a a post-it note or two or several. Um, telling the youth of today what we what we want to speak over them mm-hmm. what we want um to stick to them yes. and they uh, wrote on these post-it notes and then brought them forward which was kind of this he- like heavy moment um yeah. it i could just feel that there was a shift in the room it was mm-hmm. it was mm-hmm. palpable yes. but i had a um a poster board that said words stick speak life and they would come up and everyone put their post-it notes on this board. And I read through some of them. And the intention was to leave this poster for our youth group to see and mm-hmm. to know the words of life that mm-hmm. their mamas <laughs> yes, want yes. to speak over them. Not just in speaking words, but also in actions. And so some of these, a lot of them said the same things Mm -hmm, and it's, it's, you are loved. Mm -hmm. You are more than enough. Mm -hmm. You Mm -hmm. are cherished. You are, um, smart. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, there are so many words. Some of them were even longer, um, Mm -hmm. descriptions of Mm -hmm. just, just powerful life giving Words, yeah, that I would want stuck on me. Yeah, that is awesome. <laughs> so good. It, it was, was so. They had they had to write it and then get up from their seat and bring it forward yeah, yeah, because wow. it was laid on the platform in front of Jamie. Yeah, and they had to physically get up and bring it forward, and so it was literally laying those on the altar mm-hmm. for those children. Wow. Mm-hmm. It. It was emotional. It was so so good. Declarations are so important. One of the things my my husband would take our kids to school um, most mornings and, and when they reached junior high and high school, they were both going, you know, pretty much same school, same time. So he would take them to school and he would do confessions with them in the morning. Aww. And he would say, you are smart. And they go, we are smart. You're, you're good looking. We're good looking. You're going somewhere to, ha- you know, oh, you're a blessing that. going somewhere to so happen. Good. We're a blessing going. Right. So they had this little routine that, um, so that just spoke life oh. over the start of every day with them. And it was, yeah. um, it was really a powerful thing they never 
forgot it and and it's uh, you know my kids are older now and mm-hmm. um but words are so powerful so and the good. intent of the heart behind the yes. words that's why there was a shift in the room i <laughs> yeah. wish that would have been amazing to uh, be, because mm-hmm. it's it it is actually you know i can write a word down but when i put some intention behind yes. it mm-hmm. and i speak it from a heart that wants yes. that to carry i want this word to go to you this is your <laughs> yes. word this is mm-hmm. my declaration for you it carries power with it yes. so awesome. well and, and here was the challenge too is you know i i said to the ladies i said that i'm i want to give this to the youth group so <sighs> they're going to see this they're yeah. going to know that you <laughs> spoke this over them so yes. now we got to back that up with yep. our actions yes. because right. like i said you know our our kids have this assumption that we have assumptions about them so let's mm-hmm. prove them wrong yes let's yes. let's have these positive mm-hmm. outlooks over our kids mm-hmm. as we yeah. speak life yeah. through words and actions yes it was so good jamie thank you so much for that thank you <laughs> Yeah. I'm glad I got to be a part of it. It was it was really neat. <laughs> it was so good. Well, thank you for tuning in to the She Is podcast by Refuge City Church. We pray that you have been encouraged and equipped in knowing who you are in Christ. If you are wanting to have a personal relationship with Jesus, pray this with me. Dear Jesus, I know that you love me. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. Please come into my heart to stay and help me to hear your voice and grow in you. In Jesus' name, amen. We would like to hear from you. Email us at sheispodcast at refugecity.church. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to hear more from us every week. Thank you for tuning in. And remember, until next time, you are empowered to speak life.